Hey folks, let's talk about three powerful tips to help you develop a personalized way of eating that helps you lose all that excess weight and maintain a healthy weight. First, why am I talking about that? For the last 25 years, I've been a personal trainer slash certified strength and conditioning coach. So I've worked with thousands of regular people and athletes to help them develop a personalized way of eating that fits their needs and helps them maintain a healthy weight. So the goal here isn't to focus on what type of diet you should do because that ultimately doesn't matter. You can lose weight on a low carb diet, a keto diet, carnivore diet, a vegan diet, um, regular counting calorie diet. Uh, but ultimately the biggest thing that matters most is that you develop a way of eating that you can stick to that causes you to eat a healthy level of calories and that you don't feel like you are missing out on things. So we're going to start with number one, focus on whole unprocessed foods such as fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, meats such as beef, uh, poultry, chicken, turkey, fish, uh, and whole grains rather than highly processed versions of these things. And the reason you want to do that is people who consume a mostly whole foods diet are going to consume fewer calories than people who consume a highly processed diet and they're going to absorb fewer of those calories, which we mentioned in our last video. But what is really the difference between whole unprocessed foods and highly processed foods? Think like chips, crackers, cookies, these highly processed um, dinner uh, meals that people will consume. Like say, you, you know, you get some uh, frozen dinner that is, uh, you know, like a chicken Alfredo type thing. What are the major differences? First, whole unprocessed foods are not pre-digested for you. Highly processed foods are mechanically broken down so that you consume more of them. It really kind of overrides these satiety signals. You don't feel full and you feel kind of like a hedonistic drive to consume more foods. Additionally, these highly processed types of foods are generally made in a way that causes you to overconsume them. So eliminate these. Now, is there a difference between highly processed snacks from a regular carbohydrate diet versus like these keto snacks and these low carb snacks? Absolutely not. Those highly processed foods, which creep into the diets of people who go keto will cause you to eat more and they will try to thwart your weight loss efforts. So focus on the whole unprocessed foods. Try to limit the highly processed foods or avoid them altogether, but enjoy your diet. Don't completely, um, you know, take things out of your diet that you may enjoy. Just don't make them a central part of your diet. Now, the second important behavioral factor is find a way of eating that is going to be your end game and stick to it. Now, this may seem like it's common sense, but it's not. I've worked with a lot of people who say, I'm going to do a keto diet to get to the weight I want to do, and then I'm going to slowly transition to consuming more carbs. There is no point in doing that. It is extremely difficult to change your behaviors around eating. So just go right to where you want to go. Now, if you try to do that, oh, I'm going to do keto for a while and then switch, you're basically trying to change twice. And the chances that that actually happens are not very good. You might be able to do it, but monkeys might fly out of my butt. Now, finally, what is the third one? This is actually, to me, the most important factor. And for me personally, something that helps me maintain a healthy weight. I was around 240 pounds, um, whew, 15 or so years ago, currently 185. And I've been that for about, you know, the, the past 13, 14 years. And what was probably the most important factor for me is eliminating variation. What do I mean by that? Every morning I eat the exact same breakfast with a little trade-off. So four days a week, I'll have two soft boiled eggs, and then I'll have kind of a, a bowl, which is made of a triple berry blend, blackberries, straw, uh, raspberries, and blueberries. Then I have some um, oats on top of that, walnuts, uh, ground flax, and then I put goat milk kefir on it. That is my breakfast every single day. Lunch changes from day to day, and dinner for me is a salad with a meat, uh, chopped up a whole bunch of greens, a whole bunch of vegetables, and I generally use olive oil, uh, and I have some sort of cheese on top of that. Those two things in my diet are at least five or six days a week what I consume, and that helps me control a large portion of my diet. Lunch is a sa the same pattern. It is a, a meat, a, some sort of small amount of uh, starchy carbohydrate, or uh, a grain, and then uh, mostly uh, on that side of the plate, it's going to be some sort of non-starchy vegetable. Um, you can, a lot of different things here, um, broccoli, uh, cauliflower, things of that nature. Now, this is what I eat most of the time, and that 
makes like it very, very easy for me to control my weekly calorie intake. Then every now and again, I can mix in some different things. But the fact that my breakfast and my dinner are essentially the same every day, and I really, really enjoy them, especially that breakfast starts me out right. I feel good. I feel satiated. I don't feel like I need to eat anymore. And now, you know, figure out, I do three meals a day. So that's 21 meals a week. So between 10 and the, 10 and 12 of those meals are always exactly the same an additional five or six are slight modifications so there's really only three meals in the entire week where i might be able to get out of control and that's not a lot and it's very easy to control your energy intake when you do things like that so figure out something that works for you you may want to go keto and that might be great for you so find a breakfast that you like that you'll eat every day you don't want to change your meals up every day i've written out programs for people like write me out a nutrition program i want a different meal every single day it never works because a people never follow it and B, all that variation just kind of screams ways of overeating. Like maybe you're going to add something to each meal. So these three behavioral patterns can be real big movers in helping you lose excess weight and maintain a healthy weight.